Welcome to another video from Dr. Locke. What in the world are we doing here? Well, this is the reconditioned engine that was put in about 13 months ago, about 25,000 K ago. From the start, it sounded bad. Like, it sounded like a loose timing chain, sounded like a, a loose tappets at the top, just sounded really bad, like a tractor. And since uh, somebody decided to uh, run up the back of it, it's come back from the panel shop and it's a good time now to sort it out. So I go back to the manufacturer, sorry, the reconditioned guy, and he says, most likely it's an oil pressure problem, and that's kind of what I was leaning towards as well. I'll put a sound of what it was sounding like. Okay, all right, we're getting oil. Okay, thank you. Uh, that brought us to the pressure relief valve, right here. Now in there, there's a spring, and if it's too tight, or uh, too loose it won't work so I pulled it out measured it as per the specs and it's 71 millimeters so it's good it's in the right way so it's good uh, the manual says that if it's jammed open or jammed closed jammed open you'll rather have too much pressure or too little pressure we did a PSI test on the oil and got six six PSI and then I did another one myself and I got 35 PSI I'll put an image of that on the screen so, being critical, oil being critical in motors, especially these type of motors, oil is what kills them a lot of the time. I thought it's not worth risking. So I was told that the oil pump could come out. A simple matter of dropping the sump, and once after you drop the sump, you can drop this lower piece here and get it out, uh, release the tensioner and then get it out. Uh, not on this model. This model, this whole piece is connected with the uh, oil pump. Uh, so to, to get this out, to get this oil pump out, uh, means that I have to remove the whole front end, um, everything basically, got to remove the top timing, top timing chain, bottom, uh, all this pulley timing cover, I've got to kind of really go to town on it, all because uh, there's a bolt that you can't get to, to take off this bottom tray, so one thing's leading to another, so basically bad oil leading to new pump, um, I could just buy another another valve of a second hand one or a brand new one but that's like 300 bucks to get a whole new pump is 500 bucks and by the time you do all that if it doesn't work you got to pull it all strip it all down and this is the second time i stripped it down because the first time i stripped it down dropped the sump i checked the valve and readjusted it put it back in and it still didn't make any difference still sounded good for about a minute or two uh, sorry about 10 minutes and then started playing up again so i'm leaning towards this pump the little tiny uh valve in there is getting stuck I don't know why, it could be in the housing, it could be the valve, I don't know. But what I do know is the best way is just to replace it. So to replace it, I've got to get this out. To get this out, I've got to get the chain out. To get the chain out, I've got to get this out. Get the whole front end out, then get this out. This, this, this. So it's turning into a, quite a big job. Um, and it really begs the question, was this replaced? This petrol uh, oil pump, this bit here, was this replaced? I just don't know. When I look at it, I think, you know, maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. But to have an oil pump go so quick and sound crappy from the beginning, I reckon they've checked the specs on this, put it back in, so it's an oil pump, it'll get us past our one year, let's just leave it and let's just continue on. And I believe that's what they did. So I'm always learning, and what I learned was a reconditioned engine does not mean a crate engine where everything from top to bottom is brand new. It's more of refurbished. If it's still working, put it back together, change some of the more common parts that go like uh, the timing chains things like that even the timing chain I'm it's 200 bucks I'm gonna because I have to pull it off and I'm swap it out because it sounded it sounded um, you know pretty crappy I did check that we were getting oil up to the chain we are but when you've got oil issues either too much or too little um, it's probably not functioning and operating correctly so why are we doing this well I've got a quote from got a quote from Hyundai to do this was about three thousand bucks plus parts parts are about a thousand bucks so we're up to about four grand and then plus it would have been a month or two wait with the car off the road i get the part for 500 bucks off aliexpress got myself a nice hoist uh so and i got you know a little bit of time to do it it's pretty slow at the moment so i thought i might give it a crack myself because i'm getting real tired of asking people to do things and getting dodgy results or it keeps playing up so owning the problems of being able to do it myself is my preferred option um, even with the oil pressure, you know, I gave it to my mechanic, asked him for two days, he finally did it, he said six PSI, and that might be correct, but it took me half an hour to get the sensor in, and the sensor lives underneath the alternator pretty much about here. If I can show it to you, 
uh, oil pressure sensor is right there, right there, if you can see, there. So to get to that, uh, can't get to it from the top, got to get to it from the bottom, and you've got to unscrew it, and then you've got to screw in the pressure sensor and all that sort of stuff. So that took me a good half hour, 40 minutes. My mechanic didn't charge me for it, so I really wonder if he even did it, because that was a real mongrel of a job. Anyway, so I learned something there. Learn how to uh, do the check the pressure on uh, this particular model. So, uh, the battery, I'm going to replace that too, replace that, that's only about five months old, and it's when you charge it up, the little green indicator, it still says needs to be recharged. What's going on with that? Brand new battery, brand new motor. Um, so, a lot of things are giving me, uh, giving me a lot of grief at the moment. Even the scissor lift went all the way down to where it goes down to double down, and it stops at about one foot from the ground, that's normal. Then you push the button, and it doesn't go any further. I emailed the people who sold it to me, and they said, oh, it's just some um, proximity sensor. Here's a diagram. I thought to myself, after spending 10 grand, come on. He, first of all, he says, oh, we'll get somebody out there, we'll get somebody out there. But, you know, it looks like they just want to give me a, a wiring diagram and tell me it's a proximity sensor. I don't do lifts. Where the fuck's a proximity sensor? What the fuck does it look like? Give me a data sheet. Give me some photos. I mean, fuck's sake. And there's something else now that I study, learn on, and work out how to adjust the proximity sensor on a scissor lift, which I've got no fucking idea. But after spending all the money, that's where we're at. Um, and after spending close to 15, 16 grand all up, maybe more, this is where we're at here. Pulling off myself, timing chain, and all the rest. All right, so a few things I did learn that are going to help people out who um, are working on their own H1 I loads is um, you can pin the air conditioning back, as I've done here. doesn't hurt it. There's some flexible hoses. They don't kind of bend out of their shape you know, too much. It's doable. I've seen that done. Many mechanics do that before. That's your radiator, your air conditioning. All that can be pinned off to the side. To get this front uh, part out, it is what they call a cassette. So you have to remove the bumper bar. To remove the bumper bar, um, um, I'll show you, I'll show you. You've got, uh, well, it's a bit hard to see there. Basically, I'm going to point where all the screws are, so that way uh, make it easy. Move the bumper bar, you've got these plastic screws that go all the way along the top, here, along here, all right? All the way along there. Then you've got uh, one under here, and you've got one on the other side in the same position. Then you've got these plastic clips that go all the way along the front, along here. These are your plastic clips. Okay, then you can just uh, prise it out of here, you just wiggle wiggle, and you can take off the, the bumper bar. Of course, if you've got a bull bar or a roo bar, that's got to come off first. Once you get that off, um, then you can go to your support, support one, which is here. This is uh, four bolts and one bolt here, and that will come off bolts for that uh, here. And it looks like that. Okay, once you get that out of the way, um, you can undo your intercooler, two bolts here, two bolts here, bolt here, bolt here, plug, take it out from the back. Of course you've got your hoses, of course you've got to um, drop your, drop your uh, coolant. Once you get that out, you get that bar out, you get the uh, uh, intercooler out. Uh, after that, on the back of the radiator here, you'll have some brackets which hold in here and here. So they're two Phillips from here and here. To get to the one on this side, you have to remove the, uh, the coolant reservoir. Uh, so two bolts here, one bolt here for the coolant reservoir, get that off. One bolt up here, one bolt up here for the radiator, and then you can start to manipulate it and move it out. Then the whole cassette basically comes out. What's a cassette look like? Well, it looks like this. This is the cassette. Okay, so one bolt there, one bolt there, um, all the bolts around here and then one bolt on the side, and one bolt on that side. Okay, and then you, you get to this point here. So I've had that off twice now, first time to try and get this pump out, couldn't get it out, worked out it's gonna be a huge job. Put it back together, check the relief out now, I'm putting it back, um, and well, basically I'm stripping it down again because well, I'm gonna get this out now. I'm gonna to have to pull off the timing, something I did not wanna do, but that's what I'm gonna to have to do. Um, so first things first, I'm gonna take off the serpentine belt, uh, take off some pulleys, take off this cover here, uh, take off timing chain, and then we're gonna move down to this cover here. Hopefully I can take this off and leave this one on and a few others. So I just gotta get this off and then I can get this oil pump out. Hopefully in a week or two, the new one will be here. Then I put that back in, put that back on, put that back on, put everything back on, start it up, cross my fingers and hope for the best that uh, we've got a properly sounding uh, eye load. 
So that's where we're at. Nothing seems to be working as, as it should these days. Everything's just uh, faulty or got, a, got an issue. So um, yeah, did I want to tackle this? No. Um, do I want to be paying another 5,000 bucks to, to, to get this fixed? No. And if I was to pay 5,000 bucks to get it fixed, chances are if it's something else I would have wasted five grand so might as well just do it myself um, I've got the I've got the PDF uh, workshop manual so that's pretty good and um, I've got the guy who built the motor I can call him he'll give me a little bit of advice here or there that's pretty good failing that I can always call the mate who's a mechanic and uh, get him around but you know these things are not cheap calling uh, friends around to fix things not cheap even though they're friends so that's where we're at I will give you an update shortly